How many of you in the room uh, do this thing where you might pick a word for the year? Is there anybody in here that does that? Okay, yeah. Well, I noticed when we moved back to the United States in 2013, I noticed this was kind of a trendy thing. So I that people were like give, having a word for the year. And so I started to test it out a little bit, probably in 2014, 2015. I thought, well, you know, I think I'll try a word for the, for the year. And so I did. And so, you know, since then, I've been trying to pick a word or a theme or something like that. And so a lot of what I'm going to share tonight with you is just stuff I've learned, in particular with two words that I picked. One year I picked grow. And then another year, it was the year of COVID, which was very fitting, I picked a bite. And so a lot of what I'm going to share with you is just stuff that I learned as I was studying. And um, and so I, 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 I wanted you to know that what you hear is probably nothing new, but sometimes it's okay to share something and remind ourselves, right? Okay, so... In front of my house, I have this little bitty kind of landscaped area, okay? It's nothing fancy. It's not a beautiful garden, and I'm not a gardener by any stretch of the imagination. But I have this little landscaped area. And within this little landscaped area, I have some bushes, right? And there's nothing special about the bushes. They just kind of fill. They take up space. They grow. They get kind of big, and so they're kind of nice. But there's one bush that's particularly different than the others. And again, it's just a normal green bush most of the year, but there's a teeny little season where this bush will bloom because it's a lilac bush, right? And so when the lilac bush is blooming, I notice it. I pay attention to it because the blooms on it just draw attention, right? And I think about that lilac bush when it's blooming. In that moment, in that season, that bush has reached its potential. It is doing what it was created to do. And I think we're created with great purpose and potential. And as a matter of fact, we were created in the image of God to reflect him, to glorify him. That's what that means, to reflect him. So for each one of us to reach our blooming, trying to use the theme here, if we reach our blooming point, then what that really means is we have reached our potential, our purpose, right? And so all of us have great potential in this room. And every single one of you have purpose. And so what do we need to do in order for us to reach our potential, to reach our purpose? Great question, Paula. We're going to answer that. We're going to start by looking at Colossians 2, 6, and 7. It says, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Now, there are two things that have to happen that we see in this verse if we are going to reach our potential, if we are going to serve the purpose for the reason why God uniquely created each one of us. And the first part, you see, the first thing you see is in the very first part of that verse. It says, As you received Christ Jesus the Lord. The very first step in reaching your potential and in in getting to your purpose in life, you have to be saved. I have to be saved. It's the very first step. And there's not one person in this room that doesn't have to take that step first. You know, just because we're born in the United States does not make us a Christian. You know, just because we showed up to this conference tonight does not make us a Christian. Just because we were born into an amazing family, and let me tell you, I've got a long, amazing history of godly women in my family, but that still didn't make me a Christian. As a matter of fact, God's word says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you know what? There was a day when I recognized I'm part of that all. 
I am part of this all. And because I'm part of that all, it also says, for the wages of that sin is death. But, don't you love the buts in the word of God? But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus the Lord. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. The first question we have to ask ourselves if we really want to reach our potential is, are we saved? Has there been a time that you personally received Jesus Christ as your Savior? I had to do that. There was a time when I realized that, and I made that step. So then what do we do? Once we are saved, we've made that step, we've, we've accepted Christ as our Savior, as it, we received him, as it says in the Word, now begins the growing process. It says, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. We have to learn to grow. And in order to grow, we've got to develop a really good root system that's going to support that growth. So I've got a picture I wanted to show you guys um, here on the board. So I want you to notice some things about this growth process. And really all of us start as this teeny little seed And we start to sprout this little root, and then we start to grow. But I want you to notice that this picture, as you watch it progress, that as it is being rooted, it's also being built up. Okay, so you've got the surface. So as it's being rooted, now it's going to be built up, and that's us. We got to develop a good root system so we can be built up if we're going to reach our potential, right? Notice also that as, as you progress over, that the healthy growth has a lot of hidden depth supporting it. If you see a real healthy growing person, there's probably been a lot of work under the surface that we've never been you know, privy to, right? So there's, if you're going to see growth, you're going to notice that there's a lot of hidden depth to support it. And I also like the idea of what happens in private is eventually going to flesh out in public. What happens in private will eventually flesh out in public. That's why we've got to be very mindful of our private life, very mindful of what we're spending time on, quietly growing, developing. And so if we're going to reach our potential, we've got to get rooted. We've got to get grounded so we can be built up. All right. What helps us grow, right? So we want to, the majority of our our talk this evening is in Luke. And so I want to talk about what helps us grow. So let's look at Luke chapter 8. I'm going to read uh, verses 4 through 15. When a great crowd was gathering and people from town to town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it, and some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it, and some fell into good soil. And grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when you see a phrase like that, it's like the Lord saying, Pay attention. What I'm saying is important. He who has ears, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But for others, they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in a time of testing, they fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, 
They are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. We are going to grow. We're going to become established in the faith by the word of God. Allowing it to take deep root in our hearts in order to bear fruit with patience. You know, in each one of us, we're created to bear fruit. Every one of you in the room, right? And there's two things we see in here that we've got to pay attention to if we're going to bear fruit. First off, we've got to pay attention to the seed. What is the seed? He says, the seed is the word of God. The very first encounter, I got to thinking about this, the very first encounter we have with the word of God is Jesus himself. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1.14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The first encounter you have with the word is the word of God. And listen, if you don't hear me say anything else tonight, hear me say this. Excuse me. What you do with the word is the most important thing you will ever do. What you do with the word, the word made flesh, is the most important thing you will ever do. Right? Right? goes right back to that first part of growing salvation. Secondly, we encounter the word through his word, the Bible, right? That's what he has spoken to us. And I think it's important how we learn to interact with the Bible. And so think about how you interact with God's word. You know, what is your attitude towards it? Is it more of a, well, I know I'm supposed to do it, so I'm going to do it, and it's like a little check, 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 you know? Or maybe you're just kind of a casual listener. You maybe hear a sermon on the radio or a podcast or, you know, a message like tonight or you go to church or whatever. But do you really take time to listen? Do you take time to read it? Do you take time to act upon it? We need to learn to become students of the Word of God, researchers. Wow, I have seen the phrase, and I don't know how many of you are on social media, um, but I see this phrase a lot, I've done my research. We need to become researchers of the Word of God. That's where the truth is, let me tell you. The stuff we find on the Internet is probably not there, right? Um, <laughs> But we need to become students of the word of God so we can be rooted, so we can grow, and we can be established in order to bear fruit the way we were created to. So in Luke, it's teaching us that the word, the seed, is very important. And how we learn to interact with that is very important, right? The second part that I want to point out, or the second thing I would like to point out from this scripture, what Luke is teaching us is the soil. The seed on the soil will make a difference with what the seed does. The seed can't become the plant. It can't bear the fruit. It can't get rooted if the soil is hard and crusty, right? So it's super important to recognize the soil of our hearts. And that's what this is talking about. The soil is our hearts. And so there's four kinds of people groups, um, soils, four kinds of hearts that are interacting with the seed in this parable, the word of God. And so we're just going to go through them. And honestly, ladies, if we, we are being honest, and we should be honest, right? I've been all four of these. You've probably been all four of these. And it's really, if you start to look at it, it's really just kind of a process of growth, you know, from the beginning to the end. 
And so we've all been part of that process. And then sometimes we get lazy or we get busy and we kind of bump up a little bit and then we get going again, right? That's life. That's what happens. So it's really interesting when you start to see it like that. So the very first people group that interact with the seed, it's those that are along the path. Okay, this is kind of the person who really doesn't pay attention. They really don't hear what you're saying. They're not saved. It says the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so they may not believe and be saved. We were all here at one time. I was here at one time when I realized I was part of the all, right? And so there are those amongst us, believe it or not, that are just along the path. They don't comprehend the word like somebody who does. And so there's that group of people when the word of God is spoken, you know, they'll be like, that kook, what are they saying? I don't, even, don't listen to her. She's a fanatic, right? And so there are those amongst us that are along the path. The second group of people is those on the rock. All right, I feel like the, the on the rock people, it says when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but these have no root. I feel like the on the rock, the people, they're like the ameners in the crowd, right? Woo, that was a great word. Yeah, you go, Jesus. And they feel so good after you hear a message. The worship is amazing. And they just float like a little cloud as they go out the door. They receive it with joy, but they don't have any roots, right? And so that would be maybe that crowd. And I've been that person myself too. The third group is those among the thorns. Okay, so they do good for a while, and they might even have a tiny little bloom here and there, right? But without making the word the number one priority in their life, it's just going to get choked out with all the other things they got going on. What does it say? They get choked out by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature. And I think that if this, is a, this one is the scariest to me because, man, we get so busy. And sometimes we're busy doing really, really good things. But when the word just becomes one of the many, many things that we do, we got to be careful because our heart's not going to receive it and it might get choked out, right, by the other things going on. Okay, the fourth part is those that are in the good soil. I believe that they hear it, they ponder it, they receive it, they obey it, they're going to grow and they're going to bear fruit. And I really believe with all our hearts, this is where all of us want to be. The only way we're going to get there is if we are extremely intentional. Making the word of God a priority. Making sure we're checking our hearts so that when the word of God is spoken, or when we read the word of God, that we're ready to receive it to hear it, to ponder it, to really take it in. You know, sometimes growth is a very slow process. You know, a tiny little seed doesn't become a jumbo tree overnight. It's okay. Just be where you are and start the process, wherever you are in this, this grouping. And so real quick here before we, we're going to take a break, I just wonder if I could get you guys to just bow your heads for a moment and just kind of ponder for a minute. What is the stage of your heart? If you are along the path and have not encountered the word of God, Jesus, the word made flesh, I wonder if you would do that tonight. This very evening could be your start. You just simply would pray in your heart, I need you, Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I need and I want your free gift of salvation. Forgive me and come into my heart. 
establish me in you. Maybe some of you are on the rock. You feel good about the message, but you just carry on with life, and there's no real depth to your relationship with the Lord because you don't have roots to establish you. Or maybe you're among the thorns and have gotten away from making the word your number one priority. With so many other things going on, his word's getting choked out. And maybe you've stopped maturing. Lord, I know you desire for all of us to be in the good soil so we can be rooted and established in you. And Lord, we want that too. I pray for each lady in this room that you would just meet her wherever she is, draw near to her, soften the soil of her heart to receive you, to receive your word, your word of truth, to be transformed into the woman that you created her to be. Lord, that we would grow, that we would grow in you, that we would bear fruit that glorifies, that honors you, reach our potential, and be the woman that you created us to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.